Good evening. I am Jackie Perez, the Artistic Director of tonight's concert and the Assistant Director of Music Ministries here at the Church of St. Francis Xavier in New York City. I am one of tonight's producers, along with John Uline, our Director of Music Ministries, and Joel Dabu, the producer of our first and tonight's virtual concerts. Let All the People Say Amen is the second of three virtual concerts that Xavier is offering to our faith community. For those who attended our first concert, the urgent call, love goodness, love God, we thank you and welcome you back. And a very warm welcome to those of you joining us tonight for the first time. I suspect like many of you, I have been preoccupied by anxiety about the state of our relationships with each other and the common good not only in our civil society and our personal relationships, but also in our church. And while there is indeed much to be anxious about, there are some basic desires we all have in common. Love of family and friends, a safe home, clean water and food, meaningful work and service, access to good health and health care, and freedom and acceptance of our God-given human dignity. For me and for many, I rely on my faith in God to keep me at peace amidst these anxieties. At an earlier production meeting, John asked me why the title, Let All the People Say Amen. I approached assembling this program as if I were writing a prayer to God. And when I finally arrived at the finished program, I couldn't help but want to explain like the last word of the Bible, amen. I hope our offering tonight generates in you a similar sentiment, or at the very least, the bright light of joy piercing the dark night. Amen.
beloved, clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but bestows favor on the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your worries upon God, who cares for you. Be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the evil one, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist the evil one, steadfast in faith, knowing that your sisters and brothers throughout the world undergo the same sufferings. The God of all grace, who called you to eternal glory through Christ Jesus, will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you after you have suffered a little. To God be dominion forever. Amen. Hey. 
I have languished for days, weeks even, and just now understand how hungry I am. How desire burns, how I long for sustenance, food and drink for my soul, my deepest self. I languish and weep and mourn my losses. I am empty, God, and tired and spent. You create feasts from a few pieces of bread. You make our tears fuel for compassion. You use our mistakes and our shortfalls to build new ideas and better plans. Fill my life, God of abundance. I need energy. I need love. I need passion for what gives life. I need and desire and hunger and thirst. I wait here at the center of my need. I wait for the silence to fill with joy. I wait for the moment to bloom with promise. I wait to enter your possibility. Amen. Take 
Brian Stevenson is a lawyer, social justice activist, and founder of the Equal Justice Initiative and the National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama. In his book, Just Mercy, the story of redemption and justice, Stevenson makes the case that it is distance, physical, social, and spiritual, that allows injustice to flourish. He says proximity to one's neighbor, and remember, we're all neighbors according to Jesus, is what turns our hearts towards love and restorative justice. Stevenson writes about his first interaction with an inmate named Henry on death row. Two men exactly the same age, one studying at Harvard Law School, one condemned to die. Henry asked me questions about myself, and I asked him about his life. Within an hour, we were both lost in conversation. I had no right to expect anything from a condemned man on death row, yet he gave me an astonishing measure of his humanity. In that moment, Henry altered something in my understanding of human potential, redemption, and hopefulness. Proximity to the condemned and incarcerated made the question of each person's humanity more urgent and meaningful, including my own. I've represented people who have committed terrible crimes, but nonetheless struggle to recover and to find redemption. I have discovered deep in the hearts of many condemned and incarcerated people the scattered traces of hope and humanity, seeds of restoration that come to astonishing life when nurtured by very simple interventions. Proximity has taught me some basic and humbling truths, including this vital lesson. Each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done. My work with the poor and the incarcerated has persuaded me that the opposite of poverty is not wealth. The opposite of poverty is justice. Finally, I've come to believe that the true measure of our commitment to justice the character of our society, our commitment to the rule of law, fairness, and equality cannot be measured by how we treat the rich, the powerful, the privileged, and the respected among us. The true measure of our character is how we treat the poor, the disfavored, the accused, the incarcerated, and the condemned. Stevenson goes on to write, we are all implicated when we allow other people to be mistreated. An absence of compassion can corrupt the decency of a community, a state, a nation. Fear and anger can make us vindictive and abusive, unjust and unfair, until we all suffer from the absence of mercy and we condemn ourselves as much as we victimize others. The closer we get to mass incarceration and extreme levels of punishment, the more I believe it's necessary to recognize that we all need mercy, we all need justice, and perhaps we all need some measure of unmerited grace. Yeah.
There's a hungry one who lives on the street. There's a thirsty one without a cup to drink. There's a little one with no shoes on her feet. There's a family sleeping in the rain and the one abused will never be the same the addicted one with no one left to blame all of these are my people all of these long to be free So far from home I was lonely So bitter and alone Evicted, illegal, incurable Different, despised I was locked out you let me in, I was at the end You helped me to begin, I am a lot like you Sister, brother, friend So follow me into the kingdom Follow me What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel. Cease from buying and selling. Give up, just for now. 
on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down, and when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or for worse in sickness and in health, so long as we all shall live. Amen. Come on now, everybody, amen. Let all the people say, amen. 
My name is John Uline, and what a wonderful respite we're having this evening from the remarkably challenging times we're living through. As the Director of Music Ministries at the Church of St. Francis Xavier, there are so many people I am thankful for who make my job appear easy, and yet they are the true heroes. At the top of that list is the Artistic Director for tonight's concert, Jacqueline C. Perez, or as we call her, Jackie. She cooked up a savory blend of music and readings that have enriched our lives this evening. But none of this would have been possible without the true culinary exquisiteness of Joel Dabu's videography and sound mixing and all of his production values. To these two folks, I give a heartfelt thank you. I talked in the introduction to our first concert, The Urgent Call, available on YouTube, how our desire for a tasty bonbon had been replaced by a substantial steak au poivre. We haven't gotten the, the taste of chocolate and praline yet, but tonight we experienced a robust fall selection of root veggies, souffles, and sauces. This concert with so many soloists, Maggie Green, Linda Stewart Kennedy, Mike Duras, Maria Brinkman, and Lad Boris have given us so many flavors within the sauce of a choir that it has been my privilege and my pleasure to work with over these years. Add to that the wonderful lectors, Stephanie Samoy, Larry Ruth, Nancy Lawrence, Carlos Martin, and Christina Amendolia, and we have the perfect blend of spices for the evening. Ad maiorem dei gloriam, to the greater glory of God. And now that I've gotten Jesuitical, I need to say thank you to the one person who made all of this possible, Father Ken Bowler. When I approached the pastor last May on Zoom during the height of the pandemic shutdown and expressed to him the importance of keeping our rich tradition of vocal music through choir, cantor, and congregation alive, he was all in 100% with the resources and the guidance necessary for a project like this to come to fruition. Thank you, Ken. I would like to thank the entire staff of St. Francis Xavier, our associate pastor, John Mulraney, and all the others, Luz, Demelli, Stephanie, Bob, Greg, Cassie, and Victor, for their unwavering support of the music ministry in all of our endeavors. Before finishing my thank yous, I have to shout out amen and thank you to you, our virtual audience, for your loyalty and support during these difficult times. The fulfillment that you provide us by listening is deeply felt and deeply appreciated by all of us. Finally, I want to let you know that on December 20th, we will serve the bonbons as our dessert at our annual Lessons and Carols. Although we won't be having our usual cookie reception, Christmas cookie reception, um, we, will have a, uh, we will have a reception of the bonbons of our favorite Christmas carols, anthems, and readings in a blended evening, which includes live performance and virtual live streamed performance. In the church, we ha will have a small group of live singers, instruments, and around 150 people in the pews, along with our readers, while at the same time broadcasting the full choir and the entire event on YouTube. Don't forget to use Eventbrite if you plan on attending in person. We do hope you will join us, either from home, on your screen, or in person, in the church on De December 20th at 7 p.m. Bye for now, and God bless. Stay safe.
he sighed, hey, preaching hey, and healing, hey, the blind hey, and the feeble. Hey, Yeah.